Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. My name is Paul Anthony. I'm CP. And today we're going to be looking at what do tobacco seeds actually look like. Here in Davidoff we have uh, 52 greenhouses and we're producing over 9 million plants that we transplant by hand, one by one, every <laughs> nine, single nine year. Nine times, like winning the lottery, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> um, so basically here we have a tray, right? Actually, this soil uh, we imported from the United States, but the soil is actually coming from Canada, from the tundras. Okay. And uh, in the US, they actually uh, process it and then they add all these white beads and they add all uh, um, basically all the nutrients. It's, it's very common uh, for greenhouses and this kind of... Um, to give it the best style, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah. and we can actually go back there in a bit and actually feel the soil, not wet, and you can see how airy it is. So it's great for the development of the roots. It's not yeah. any l lower resistance. Mm -hmm. So it lets the roots uh, nicely develop. Because in here, we're not in the business of leaves, Yet, we're in the business of small, healthy babies, right? <laughs> With well-developed roots. We have a tobacco plant, a tobacco flower, excuse me, right? And the tobacco flower originally, um, or normally, is a hermaphrodite, meaning it has both the male and the female sex. Um, if you look at this one in particular, you can see it has five stamen, that have pollen, right? Mm -hmm. The five sticks that stick out, and inside you can see that there is a green little dot. That's the stigma. That's the female. The pollen hits the, the stigma, right? It rubs off on the stigma, and then the juices bring it down to the oval. And this oval is where basically the capsule that will create in the end the seeds. Okay. So normally a tobacco plant can reproduce on its own. Sure. Right? And like how many seeds would be in each one of these pods? One of these is about a thousand, some people say up to a thousand five hundred seeds. You can see the five stamen and the stigma, right? You can hold on to that, right? And then this one is a hybrid that we've created. And this one, the stamen, the, f the male part, you can see that it doesn't produce pollen, uh, right? Okay. You can see the difference. It's quite interesting. So all of our tobacco in Davidoff does not have the ability to produce pollen, meaning that when we put it out on the farm, there is no tobacco that's gonna be creating seeds. And that way we're protecting the genetic capacity of that seed and passing it on to the next, from passing it on to the next generation and the next generation having different genetic uh, uh, qualities. Yeah. And we're also protecting ourselves, making sure that nobody's going to steal that tobacco. Sure. So our tobacco is ours, 100%. Ingenious. Now, uh, a little uh, genetics course, right? Mendel theory. It's, it's very simple. You got the F1 generation, right? You got the father, you got the mother. And the best example I like to use, I think, is very simple. Um, Catholic religion, right? My Catholic background. Um, you have Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are pure Adam, pure Eve. They didn't have ancestors before them because I'm a mix of my dad and my mother, so you can't consider, consider me pure, right? Um, so Adam and Eve is pure Adam, pure Eve. They have a son, F2 generation, right? And that son is gonna be 50% Adam, 50% Eve. And it's gonna have 50% of the qualities of Adam, 50% of the qualities of Eve. Now, let's say I want to make the next son, or I like the qualities of Eve then I can take that son and match it with Eve again. And then the next one is gonna have 75% Eve, 25% Adam, simple math. Sure. Then you do it again, you do it again, you do it again, you get 83% Eve, 92% Eve, 90 something percent Eve, until about eight crossings, you got 99.9999% Eve. Sure. So it takes about eight crossings to create a hybrid that we want. Maintaining that one characteristic that we wanted from Adam that passes on no matter what, which is sterility, is sterility. So meaning the, the, the ability to not reproduce. Sure. And uh, that's something that passes on. For example, um, a horse and a donkey creates a mule, the mule cannot reproduce. That is always something that passes on as a dominant trait. 
a tiger and a lion, a liger, the liger cannot reproduce. It's, a, it's the same uh, uh, genus, a different species. So a horse and a donkey are the same genus, but they're a different species. That's why they can reproduce, but then the offspring cannot reproduce. Sure. Uh, so we're basically taking uh, Nicotiana tabacum with another Nicotiana. Um, and we're basically doing different experiments. It takes about eight crossings, and in control of the environment like this, we can probably do it in four or five years. Okay. Just to create a seed. And then yeah. we want to cross that seed with something else, and it takes another four or five years. Sure. So sometimes it's taken us over eight years to create one hybrid. This is in particular 257, one of our hybrids, right? Just to so give you an example of how many seeds come out of here, right? Right here. I mean, that's not even all of them, all right? You gotta filter it, you gotta wash it. As you see, it's dust, it's ridiculous. And we don't even use all the seeds. We pass all the seeds through a filter and we weigh them and only the top 30% of all the seeds got, actually got used. And then imagine, that's one capsule. Every, fly, every plant has the ability to have 150 capsules. <laughs> so one, one plant can have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of seeds. But the way we do this is we have seeds, right? We have sterile ash, it's a little wet, but we have seeds, you have our hybrid. We take more or less a capsule size of seeds, right? Which is 0.3 grams in this case. Ugh. Right, a little less. And we put it here in the ash. Then what I do is I mix it in here with the sterile ash. And the point is, it's actually very simple. You like simple things, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that when we spread it here, when we sow it here, we actually know where we're sowing. Sure. <laughs> That's the only reason for the ash. Yeah. So we know exactly where we're sowing. We take our highly advanced tools. Yeah, this looks pretty sophisticated. Yeah, very, very sophisticated. You know, we are in a lab right now. And we put it in here. And you know, we normally do this in, a, uh, in an environment that is uh, non-windy, early in the mornings normally. And I try my best to spread it all over. You should have seen me do this last week. There was so much wind, it was a total <laughs> mess. Basically, I'm trying to fill up every corner, right? So that's as even as possible. Basically, at this point, we have more or less the seeds sown, right? And then I actually throw uh, sterile uh, dry rice husk. Ah, okay. And basically, um, you boil them. And basically, at this moment, I pour it over. And what this does is it maintains the humidity inside the soil. And then it also protects from irrigation so the, sh the seeds don't get sh moved around and shifted. In 10 days, you got this. And then this is 21 days. Okay, so you're getting some pretty quick growth. Yeah. On there. Now, the ladies here, their job is to transplant each one of these leaves, each one of these plants, the strongest ones, and more or less all of them around the same uh, size, and then transplant them over to there. So they have gloves and they dip their gloves in this uh, raw milk, just normal raw milk, and the milk with the gloves actually a lot, uh, protects the roots from any trauma. Okay. And that way they're not touching the, the roots or the leaves with anything that is not pure. So she tries to take more or less the plants that are more or less the same size. That way when you transplant them over to the tray, they uh, more or less all grow at the same time. This lady's job is to make sure that when she's putting them in each one of these slots, none of the leaves are covered. Because if one of the leaves are covered, then that can lead to rotting. Mm -hmm. So she has to be very careful, make a little small hole, and then individually plant each one of these. There's only one main root system. And what we want is that in these individual slots, the root system develops and you have secondary roots. And that way they can anchor down at the moment that you're transplanting them. And then again, it's over 9 million plants. Yes. I mean, I'm saying sometimes 10 million plants. Sure. Right? 
And this is a job that is also obviously seasonal. This is normally a job uh, September, October. And right now some of it is happening because it's been a dry year. So some of the farms have been moved back a little bit. Sure, sure. This is more or less about 40, 41 days. Okay. Right? And you can see the growth gets progressive yeah. and, and exponential yeah, growth. Like so this is about four to five days before the transplantation to the farm. Right? Okay. And what we have here, you see that obviously these leaves are the first leaves to come out. These are non-commercial leaves. These will not make it into cigars and you see that they're trimmed. Sure. So we actually trim the, the leaves so that the nutrients don't go to the leaves and they go to the roots. Mm -hmm. Because we want the roots to develop. Again, we're not in the business of leaves at this moment. We're in the business of strong, healthy roots. Okay. You can see here how the root system has developed. Oh yeah, it's quite complex. It is quite complex. It's not just one main root, but it's several side roots. You know, and that way when we transplant it, you have healthy roots that can anchor down and not be washed away by a rain or irrigation. Mm -hmm. And this is probably the most important part. Of course, in these 52 greenhouses, you can't smoke cigars, you can't uh, walk in without like putting your shoes in water, cars can't come in here. Uh, it's well, very well protected so that there's as least possibility of infection. Obviously, these won't be commercial leaves, mm -hmm. but okay, once is it once they're in the ground on the actual farm and then the commercial leaves start to grow? Yeah, basically, after you have transplanted them, you're gonna start seeing uh, the first commercial leaves come up in the next couple of weeks. Okay. You know, um, and that would be the volado. So the plants come, grow basically from the bottom up, and the first leaves to come up are the volado, seco, then visus, then ligero. And that's why you also harvest them accordingly. Oh, because they're right? matured by yeah. the time you Because the plant is growing from the top. You see how the flower comes up from the top? The plant is always growing at the top. Sure. And that's where the new leaves are coming out, and the flowers coming out. So that's how it kind of happens. You're gonna start seeing uh, a plant half my size at day 30 after transplantation. Yeah, wow. And again, it grows to a plant of two kilos in 100 days. It's yeah, from, from seed yeah. to a plant my height in 100 days. Yeah, it's incredible. It's, it's supposed to the tropical climate, you know, can afford. No, but it, that what's important is that we know that because it's changing so quickly, the moment of harvest, the moment of application of different nutrients, it's very important. You can't miss a day. You know, at this moment, this is supposed to kind of breakneck speed for, for yeah. plants. <laughs> I mean, us tobacco people, we don't have a life uh, from <laughs> from the months in Dominican Republic. In the winter months, we don't have a life. Sure. You know, we have to be at the farm. We have to be checking. We have to be applying the the right. Uh, nutrients at the right time and harvesting at the right time because if we miss a day we might be a day too late. Sure and for example this um, this woman here how many trays will she do in a day roughly? Woo, I have no idea let's ask her. ¿Cuánto de, de estos tú haces en un día? So they're doing 30. That's only in the morning by the way they don't work in the afternoons. Okay. So they're doing 30 a, a day. So, mm, no, yeah, more. The, 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 the more skilled ones obviously got 6,000 plus a day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, Charles Philippe and I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please also check out the full length documentary of how Davidoff makes cigars. And down here, there's a full playlist for, of our whole Dominican experience.